Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Steve Aoki. He has a new album out now. It's called Neon Future 3. We talk about a lot. We go through all the different collaborations on this album. He's going to talk to us about how he's working on making science fiction, science fact, and we talk about life. I hope you enjoy it. Leave your feedback in the comment section below. we got a podcast link in the description, and it would be really cool if you subscribe, but if not, it doesn't matter because we're still going to do what we do. Enjoy. Let's do this. Hello. Yo. Hello. Hey, man. What's going on, dude? Uh, hey, come around. I'm Zach. Hey, Zach. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. What's up, man? Nice to hear you. Dan Heather? Oh, God. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Heather, nice to I meet you. I want to meditate. A little lavender, right? Is that lavender? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't suck. Yeah, it's me. Dude, yeah. You can sit on the couch and do your thing. I just want to, like, I want to get a massage. I want to be, <laughs> be chair, <laughs> tranquil. That's right. Oh, a good vibe. oh wow! This yeah. is great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Soft. Yeah, all right. Yo, thanks for coming all, all, all in, man. We, all we need is some sage and like. I have some, and I have Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Yeah, Palo Santo wood. Oh, Not okay. Pa- yeah, uh, yeah, Palo Santo wood. This is good vibes. This thing this changes sucker. the game, really. Wow. Welcome. I'm all like, chilled out now. <laughs> Dude, Shop you have a roll. lot going on, but yeah. you always have a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's been my life since, since you know for a long time. Blessing and a curse. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's just like I, I've been on this train moving at this pace for quite some time. I just don't know any other life, you know. Does the train stopping scare you? Um, the train doesn't stop. <laughs> it could. <laughs> I, I can it. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't aware. I, Would you like, ever yeah. wanted to? It's like a, you know, like a, a, a rechargeable electric car, you know, it's like a renewable, uh, sustainable, somehow like it's got solar panels on the roof, <laughs> you know, and it just goes, you know. It's built forever. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and it's the way I think about the future, you know, like a utopia, the neon future, you know, uh, you know, like hopefully we get to the point where aging is a disease that we all can cure, so... I, is is that what the neon future looks like to you? Yeah, I I I truly believe we are literally on the cusp. Uh, we are literally on the 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 like this this fine line with technology where we're either going to be the last generation that will understand death and die, or the first generation that will live forever. Wow! So like I think that. You know, I want to make it to, you know, we, we get to the, the second part, you know, the ladder. So, um, and, I, and I think we're close because technology and how fast we move uh, and the exponential curve of, you know, how we learn and re- build on what we've learned through technology, through science. Uh, I, I think that there's there's a good possibility that we will get to the ladder. Obviously, passionate and interested do you take that interest and go any deeper with it? Like, do you meet with people who are working I do. on things? I do. And do you I'm invest? very, very, yes, I do. I invest. Um, I raise money actually more than invest. I raise money. Wow. Um, uh, I have a foundation that focuses on brain research and we raise money and we, we divvy out the money to different research organizations. And it also allows me to go into some labs, meet with some scientists, meet with some some of these uh, the people that are really working on the stuff, get some of these groundbreaking uh, information. That's that's really discussions only yeah. happen in very small circles, right? So when when doctors and and scientists talk about certain things that like, you know, you only see in like comic book or <laughs> Marvel or DC or these stories where. It's these superhero qualities of where, oh, it's just science fiction. That's like we're we're getting f- like closer and closer to bringing some of these science fiction ideas coming from our imagination to science fact. So um, uh, it's exciting. And it like, you know, then when I meet with some of these scientists, right, I, I sit and meet with them. I have hope. I have real hope because... These are the people that are working on these breakthroughs yeah. that are happening that like you only, you, you dream about, you imagine, or you, you read about, or you watch on television or movies, right? 
and uh, and it's not some crackpot schemes because, I mean, that's the whole point of clinical trials. That's the whole point of finding ways to cure cancer. You know, and in in my my one of my main goals is to help find a cure for degenerative brain diseases because my my main my main focus for my foundation is the brain, the human brain, understanding the human brain, unlocking the mysteries of the human brain, and also alleviating the pain, uh, the suffering. And finding the cures for for Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, depression, all these things that that really plague you and I, yeah. all of us in this room, every single person you know, has friends, relatives themselves that have dealt or dealing with mental illness to the point of brain degenerative illnesses. Quick question. How did you sleep last night? If your answer is not well, you should take a look at your mattress. That could be the problem. Try out Purple Mattress. This thing is legit. They know what they're doing. They want to make sure you get a good night's sleep. It was invented by a rocket scientist. Science. It's going to feel different than any other mattress out there. It's going to be soft yet firm. It's going to support you no matter what. It's going to keep you cool when you sleep. Plus, it's going to feel like you're in zero gravity. So the Purple Mattress will support your body no matter how you sleep. Back, side, stomach, it has you covered. Did I mention it keeps you cool when you sleep at night? Because science also the purple mattress wants to be cool when it comes to your wallet you're gonna get a hundred night risk-free trial if you don't like it you can return it faux free and then they'll also deliver it to you for free and they can also set it up take away your old mattress and get this it is backed by a 10-year warranty so if something happens to it they have your back literally because purple mattress will have your back when you sleep and then if you need a new one they have you covered they also want to give you free things because I i guess they're nice people Seriously, they want to give you a free pillow if you buy a mattress. Also, they're giving out other gifts site-wide. If you're interested, just text Zach to 474747. That is Zach to 474747. And the only way to get those free gifts, by the way, like the pillow and the other stuff they're giving away, is by texting Zach to 474747. That is Zach to 474747. If you want a mattress, purple is definitely worth your time. Try it out. Check it out. And let me know how you sleep. But what sparks this in you? Is there a defining moment? Is there a parallel to your interest in the brain? Does it run parallel to Neon Future starting back in 2014? Yeah, well, Neon Future really was this, it it was an amalgamation of, of, of all, of all my passion, interest in science. And, and this, this, the the main concept here, science fiction becoming science science fact. Okay. So that, that main concept is really the basis of like why I want to do a foundation to raise money, why I call the album Neon Future. And like before then I I I made a song called Singularity and I and I featured Ray Kurzweil who who talks about the 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 singularity concept, uh, which is this this point in time, you know, in the near future, in our generation where uh, you know, technology will usurp you know, uh, the human consciousness to the point where we just don't know what's going to happen. We can live forever. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff like science fiction ideas that, that we we're talking about right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, before then, you know, uh, I mean, I have to say a lot of it really deals with, with death, you know, like, uh, when my father passed away, uh, in 2008, 10 years ago, um, a lot of things changed in the way I thought about life and death. You know, I mean, when once you face something like that, something so real, something that you, you know, you could live through life when if, you know, in, at a very young age and not, not experience death that it can affect you emotionally so, so traumatically that after, after he died, you know, I just had a lot of questions, a lot of questions about what could I have done? Could I have done anything to help him? And now I have to think about the people I love. I have to think about my mother, you know, I have to think about the people that I love around me. What can I do to educate myself to learn more about how we can live happier, healthier, stronger, better, longer lives? You know, and I started reading books and books and then I, I, you know, I'm a science fiction kid. I'm a comic book kid as a kid. So I, you know, I, I dived into like future science books and, and I was like, holy, wow, this is crazy. There's like, real breakthroughs in science that's like not really discussed out into into my world. And guess what? I have a platform. You, and you can also, you, you have I a platform talk about to get this. it out there and you can fund things that exactly. aren't being funded before. Do you feel like your purpose is larger than music? 
music has been the most natural way for me to connect with people, period. But I've learned through time that music is just a tool for me to connect. So the, the, like, you know, I learned this later on that what I love to do is share and connect things I love in hopes that it brings some sort of positive influence or reaction to other people. And music has been my natural way to do that. But I've learned over time and, and just, you know, in life that you could connect with people yeah. in all different verticals, all different mediums, right? I just know music so well and it's, it's like my natural go-to to connect. But then, you know, like I, I learned about other things. And I'm like, I could talk about this, but guess what? My natural way to connect with people, I could merge that with, okay, let's call it Neon Future. Let's, let's bring in a scientist and do a collaboration with Ray Kurzweil, J.J. Abrams, Aubrey de Grey, Kip Thorne, who executive produced Interstellar and was, you know, best buddies with Stephen Hawking, you know, uh, pushing, you know, pushing the boundaries, boundaries of what astrophysics is all about to the, my new album, Neon Future 3. Yeah, Bill Nye. Bill Nye, you know, and I've been sending the messages out to the, 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 to the universe Elon Musk. I want to do a song with Elon Musk. So, I mean, it continues. I, I don't think of music as a box. I think of, I've always crossed outside, like working with BTS, working with Daddy Yankee, you know, but I also want to work outside of music, working with Bill Nye yeah. and working beyond. It, it, it's a connection point and it brings everybody together no matter who you are. So it is a way to talk to everybody, right? It's a global thing. Music. And and music, you know, it it drives right to your heart it drives right to your heart in a way that like when you sit in a classroom you learn some really important like amazing information it might like go wow that's amazing uh, that's incredible but it doesn't might, might not go to your heart music in you know everyone listens to different things at different times in their life and and has got them through things that they had a hard time getting through and it got me through things that i had a hard time going through and Luckily, at that at those points in this early my early years, I wanted to do that. I was like, I want to I want to pick up a guitar. I want to pick up a microphone. I want to create, and I want to have that expression. And like, you know, and it wasn't like me like going, I want to talk to the young kids. I'm like 14, 15. I'm just I just want to like sing a song about how like we need to get together and unite and and do like have fun, good times with my friends. And like I just wanted to speak to my friends through music, and and, and that's how it all started. Unifying. Yeah, yeah, you know, for me, it's like, okay, we break down the beginning. Yeah. It's just about fitting in. You know, I couldn't fit in with sports. I couldn't fit in with traditional things. I was, you know, I, I don't want to be the self-pity guy, but, you know, I was one of the few Asians in my community in Newport Beach, 96% white. So there's a lot of ignorance that can breed in something that's that doesn't have the diversity. And that's why, like, I champion diversity because when you have diversity amongst you, you have less ignorance. You don't even know. You don't, you don't like hate something you don't understand. But when you have, when you, when you live in an area where there is no diversity, you automatically, it's okay to judge and to hate things that you don't get. You've never seen. Okay. Well, he doesn't look, he has a different color skin than me. She acts weird. He like, they're a different size body than I am. Like, and then they like, their first thing is to judge. But when you're in diverse environment you it's less likely to judge so in, in any case like i grew up in newport beach is it's actually quite conservative it's a beautiful place but when i grew up uh, music was was this point where i you know like it was a way to to like find friends and bond through music because everybody and understood then, it right and then i was like i don't care how bad my band is we're just gonna <laughs> play in these living rooms you know, and, and my first shows were literally the four or five friends that I, that I would play to. I would teach them the lyrics before I even started saying, this is what I'm going to sing. <laughs> all or none. One for all. You guys got that? I say all or none. And then I say one for all. So you guys say one for all after I say all or none. Are you are you ready? Because I wanted to be like the bands I saw. Like everyone was singing the lyrics and like excited. So I was like, remember, all or none, one for all, one for all, one for all. Okay. <laughs> 
And so it's my four friends. I'm playing on stage with my, uh, sorry, my the the the, the carpeted living room. <laughs> um, okay, it was my stage in my head. I don't I don't care what anyone else says. And the parents are in the back, just like, okay, look at our kids, let them have fun, you know. And I'll, I will get to that song. I'm like, all right, guys, and I'll, I'll be pacing the living room, like, yeah, you know, this is the moment we could change the world together. You know, I was just like, you know, you want to reenact your 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 heroes, right? And I'm, I was talking like, I'm talking to like a bunch of people, and it's just like four of my friends. And then I and I go into the song, and I'm like, come on, guys, ready? All or none, <laughs> one for all. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, we did it. You know, like you live for those moments, and it's like really about just fitting in to a community that that can respect you for who you are, and um, and I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this community because because I think the great takeaway from what I learned when I was a kid and I've applied throughout my whole life is something that we can all take from, is that you know I think a lot of people in general they have ideas They're like I have this idea I have a great idea I want to do this I want to do that. And the hard part is going from idea to execution, right? Every time. It's, 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 the, it's the greatest, like, I think greatest mystery for a lot of people. Like, I, I have so many ideas. I'm filled with so much, like, imagination, thought. Like, I want to do all this stuff, but I can't get to execution. I can't do it. And as a kid, you know, you don't have the pressures of the world. Like, you know, like, I didn't have to worry about a job to, to pay for rent or all, things like that. You know, I was just a kid. And this idea this barrier of entry to, to try something, it was really based on, first of all, a community of friends. They all said, you know what? We're going to do a band regardless. Like, you know, you look up to the, like, 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 give you an example. When you're in a show and you're looking up to the band and you're a kid, you're like, I can never be that because they're just so good. They're just so talented. They're playing guitar so well. He's singing so well. Everyone's singing along and he's so cool. You, you just, you just don't think you'll get there, right? Yeah. But if you're hanging out with three or four of your friends that don't know how to do anything, you're like, we're going to do our own thing. And you like, it doesn't matter how bad it is. And I learned that that same thing is it's like, you have the tools in front of you. You don't need, you know, excuses. You don't need a marketing plan. You don't need investors. You don't need anything. You need, all you need is the vision, the passion and a community that can help you build this idea. And, and you know, if you want to make pizzas, Start making pizzas in your kitchen, sell it to you, to your neighbor. And it doesn't you know? need to be a large community. It could be one or two people. And in, in this case for DJing, I mean, there's a million DJs out there. Why why did why did Steve Aoki become a like a thing? Why? why? In the me? beginning, I just was I go to up to a bar, I'm like, give me a chance, let me try to bring some people in. And I'm outside of the shows passing out my flyers. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, come come to my show. Oh, it doesn't work. Actually, no one cares about Steve. This is this weird Asian guy like wants me to come to his party <laughs> in this small bar holds forty people. Oh, you know what? I I I'm gonna think of something. Um, you know, well, I'm gonna team up with my other friends that that we all listen to the same stuff, and we're gonna just get our friends in there first. That's it. We're gonna get our friends in there first, just like the living room concept. Yeah. We're gonna get those same friends, and we're gonna have a little party. And there's twenty, thirty people, and we're we're gonna build an ambience, a vibe, and environment. And word word will spread. And it's I'm, I'm not I'm never saying like it's about me. It's like it's not DIY. It's really DIC. Do it with your community. DIT. Do it together. Do you keep those people around still? I mean, uh, of course, in through life, like things change, people fall out, people fall in. Um, and, but you know, I've had a solid team and my manager, for example, my manager, Matt, he's been with me from day one. So, so when things started popping off in 2005, you know, that's when I first brought him in as a quote unquote manager, whatever. And I didn't understand what that meant, but that he's been there from 2005, from day that's one awesome. to 2000, you know, and, and, and you know, I, like we're just, we're best buds and we, we, we do business, we learn, we fail, we pick up, we pick each other up, we keep learning, we keep failing, we pick, pick each other up, keep learning, keep failing and going. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. And there's a few successes on the way. Right? right. Yeah. I mean, the successes, I mean, the successes come always after failure. You know, you have to, you have to fail. You have to fail to actually learn what happened. How do we, how do we move forward? And that's another thing. I, I think another life lessons too, the other takeaway from my story, from what I've can gather is that, you know, there's never one success point. Mm. There's never one thing that's going to change everything. Like I, if I do this, everything's going to change. No, it's like little things 
and they 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 just add up by just adding up by just adding up and by and and, and you know the whole story of like go with the journey not not the, with the uh the, the end whatever yeah. it's called um it's it's like you have to enjoy what you're doing those little successes have to mean everything and then you're going to fail and it's not linear you know it's not going to be like it's not like a video game where i need to like level up my character and then i'll get to level the next level and i'm good you get level up your character guess what the next one you go down again mm -hmm. and you just keep going because you have to do it if you love what you do. What happened? Was there a moment where you thought, if I did this or if I achieve this, my life was going to be different? Um, I think the 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 first point that really changed for me, because I was playing bars, I was playing clubs, and I was, you know, I was doing my thing in like small environments. I mean, I, I'm going to fast forward because there's a couple of different things that happened that were meaningful to me, but I mean. Getting on stage at Coachella 2007 was a really big moment. That was like one of those like, holy sh I'm playing Coachella. I can't believe it. Even though I play, I was like the first DJ at Sahara Tent, you know, like, or maybe the second. But, you know, I remember I, I got on stage and everyone's still sitting down on the ground. And and uh, I remember it was windy and and uh, and, the, and the wind was blowing and the, 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 my, my turntable, the needle skipped <laughs> the song forward. You know, I was playing on, on turntables. <laughs> I was sweating bullets. I was scared. I was like as nervous as all hell, you know. But um, I had a horrible set too. It was it was god awful. Did you prep but, like crazy for that? Yeah, of course I prep. But like when we were on stage, it's just like the wild wild west. You just never know what's gonna happen. You don't know. You can't. You can't. You you, you can't like see like these 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 things that come at you. Like I didn't know the wind. You know yeah. I can't stop the wind. You know what I mean? Like. Like over time, you, if that happened now, if something happened with my equipment, something stopped, you know, I, I can learn to, you know, vibe off of it and be like, it's okay, guys. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> In the beginning, I'm like, oh my God. Oh, like my, my life is over, you know, like, uh, but like that requires just time and patience and like dealing with it and, and failing enough where you're like, it's okay. You're Everyone okay with fails. it. I mean, I mean. I fail all the time, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for like the next <laughs> fail kind of, you know? How, how do you assess a crowd before you perform? Is every there, every crowd is different. Every crowd is different. Um, every city's different. Um, and that that's also takes time to really understand. Like, and I tour all, all around the world. Yeah. You know, I, I play, uh, I, I, you know, I play across Europe. I play all over Asia, I, you know, um, Central and South America obviously here in America and Canada. Um, and every crowd's different. Every crowd, every country kind of wants different kind of stuff. You know, EDM, I think for most people, electronic dance music, I think most people that might be listening to it, to this, to this right now, sounds like one thing, like country, one thing, rock, one thing. With EDM, just like any genre, there's so many different like categories and trends. You know, like American, the trend in America, when you play a festival set, you got to go hard. <laughs> you got to go hard and you got to go halftime. You got to have that, that like you either got to go at dubstep and go harder than the next guy or girl. And uh, in, in Europe, they, they want four on the floor. They want, they want to be jumping, hopping the whole time. You know, and like you have to understand those nuances wherever you go. Why do you think Americans want it harder? <laughs> it, it's a, it's like, I, it's like bass culture, dubstep culture. Yeah. Skrillex was a big part of that. You know, Skrillex is, you know, obviously he's an American DJ and he influenced, he's one of the, I'd say one of the most influential artists of our entire genre. He changed the game entirely. Um, there are certain artists that really have done that. Daft Punk was one of the very first artists to to commercialize electronic music, yeah. you know, because everyone knows around the world, <laughs> around the world, you know, and and then you have like Justice who like brought in this electro thing during that period of time that really like, you know, kind of like cut itself off as like this punk subculture of of uh, of EDM, and then you have Skrillex that came out and just you know, did his thing and like created an American culture because electronic music was very much European. And we're a collection of all that. And yeah, I mean, electronic music is a collection of all that, of course. So it's, I mean, the history is wide. You have Tiesto, you have like Armin van Buren, you have a lot of the Europeans that have, have like 
really put electronic music on the map for all of us. And now you have Marshmallow, who's who's like really brought it to the youth culture as well. Commercial. Right? Commercial and youth culture. What do you think of that? Do you think it hurts it, helps it? I think more people, I mean, the one thing I love about EDM and the one thing that's quite opposite from what I started with with punk and hardcore is that punk and hardcore is exclusive. Punk and hardcore yeah. is like, you man we don't care we doing our thing in here is all we care about and that's a great thing if that's that's like that's where you find your voice right and that's where your voice really counts edm is the opposite the edm is inclusive edm's like everyone's invited and you you you, you know when i play a festival like tomorrowland and i look out in the crowd it's the most inclusive yeah. most loving unified Thing you've ever experienced where you want to cry your your hairs are you're climbing up your arms because you see you see countries that you know politically do not align whether it's because of religion mainly because of religion whether it's like a muslim country and a jewish country and a catholic or christian country and different political differences their flags are next to each other it doesn't matter yeah you have like you have you have you have like israel next to uh korea next to america next to like flags across europe you know ne next to like just you know like countries where you're like wow everyone has just dropped their guard and said hey we're all here because we love music and and you really have this this massive energy feeling of love and inclusion and that's an incredible feeling and i think that like this is also transpiring into you know the fact that edm has actually been a big part of what is pushing the commercial music forward 100 percent. you know you think of all the, the 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 top 20 you break down the top 20 you go down the list all influence it's it's all like you have marshmallow you have david getta you have calvin harris mm -hmm. you have kygo you have artists that like we are we're all like we're djs and and now we we we're it's just, it's outside of the festivals, outside of our club shows. It's like we're now part of music culture, and it's a great feeling, too. Hey, I want to talk to you about the S word, school. I've been thinking about going back to college for a little bit now. My mom brings it up every now and then, um, but I, I don't know. I, I need the right school for me, and maybe one of our sponsors is that school. If you're like me and you've been considering going back to school, you got to ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits that need to be easily transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of those questions, Arizona State University could be the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 150 highly ranked degree programs 100% online, so you're going to earn the same degree that you would on campus on your own schedule from wherever you are. It's totally up to you, which to me that's like the coolest thing in the world. Plus, ASU Online accepts so many different transfer credits. They're just, they're there to make it easy for you. If you want more information, text Zach to 35517. That is Z-A-C-H to 35517. And you'll learn why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates. And why 87% of ASU grads are recruited for jobs within the first 90 days of graduation. That's really impressive. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive. Arizona State University. If you want to learn more about ASU online degree programs, text Zach to 35517. That is Zach, Z-A-C-H, to 35517. It's been amazing to watch and kind of see. But it, are you afraid of a shift? Like, because everything swings, right? Could there? Of course. I the, mean. Right? Like, are you, do you study up the next progressive sounds? Because I know a lot of DJs do. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think a lot of my success so far, I'm not saying it's going to happen in the future, but what I, what I can tell you so far is that through my life, I'm not trying to like flex or boast or anything, but through my life, I've had certain things. I wouldn't say that I am like an A plus at, at, uh, what I'm going to talk about. I would say I am above average. I am above average of, of finding out things that people will like. Got it. And I think DJs, a great DJ, the idea, like, you know, back in the day when you would, when you would DJ, you would, you want to like find records that no one has. You're, you're the one that's like essentially trend setting for the room. 
Yes. You're like, this is what like you guys need to hear. When nobody has, but also what people want to hear. Yeah, right? yeah. So you're you're helping curate the culture in the room, right? As a record label guy, you know, I've run my label Dimock since for you were 20. since ninety six. So over twenty years, over a thousand releases. At, at, on that side of things, you know, I like I need to find bands that are gonna push the envelope, you know, and. I mean, we put out over th a thousand releases. Not every, not, you know, like there's a few bands that were able to do that. You know, Block Party back in 2004, The Kills back in 2002, Chainsmokers, their their first couple of releases before Roses and before they, they they launched. And I'm not taking credit for them because they did it themselves. But, you know, I was, you know, you find certain mm -hmm. artists that are doing something special and you help them grow. And that's the whole point of what a label is all about is to find artists and help develop in, to, to a point where they're on their own. But, um, you know, whatever it is, like, I'm always curious. I'm very curious about what what's, what's next. And I think that's, like, essential for any DJ. You ask a DJ, they're, they're always digging. They're always looking. They're always trying to, to find things. And as a producer, and ask any producer this, you, you have to think forward. You have to think forward. And here's the thing. You, you can't think too forward. Because if you think too forward, then you went right over everybody's head. And then like your music might be, if it came out later, it might've just got everybody. But, but like, so it, I think the, the, the soft spot, the magical spot is right in between too far ahead and right in front of your nose. So just right in between, if you can get around there, you're going to be culturally relevant at that time. But guess what? On top of that, you have to do it all the time. It, it's consistency. Yeah, so it's like, you know, I, that's why I say I, I'm 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 above average. I'm above average of because also I'm curious. I'm I'm excited to, about what things are going to happen. Who's creating culture? Who's pushing things? What the sound might might be? I take the risks. I take the risks, and majority of the risks fail because you don't hear about the failures so much. You just hear like, oh, he's got a big record. But I did 10, 15 other records that that didn't break through the ceiling. They're all great records to me, but they didn't break the ceiling like, you know, doing the song with BTS or doing a song with that 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 really like I think Pretender's a hit, by the way, with AJR. Thank, thank you. Dude. Thank you. I love that song. Really, it's phenomenal. When you sit down to do a song, what's the first thing you do? How do you start? Every song and... And I really champion collaboration more than anything now. I mean, it's it's one thing to be in the studio alone and you get into your own thoughts, you get into your own samples, and you like just dive in. Uh, it's a great it's a great therapy to like just do that. But for me, like I live in collaborations. I thrive off collaborations. I'm addicted to collaborations, and uh, each collaboration is is an open book. It you just don't know where it's going to go. So you go in with nothing. You go in with, you know, with your with your songs, with uh -huh. your ideas, with your beats. Of course, you go in with something. They go in with something. And then we come in together and be like, you know, a, a game of, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. I like parts of, like, parts of this. I like parts of this. Okay, let's, let's get to the middle ground. But you have to get to the middle ground in a non-offensive way, in a no-ego way. You have to be able to be like... You know, I have to disconnect from like the way that I need to do it. It's about yeah. how we are going to do it. And um, and it teaches you how to drop your ego. It teaches you how to unmarry yourself to certain things and, and, and ways of how you, you know, interpret or produce your music. Is that the hardest part? No, no. I, I mean, I, I love it. I love it. I, I, I can go in any direction. And that's, that's also partially how I'm able to make a Latin record with Daddy Yankee or Nicky Jam, make a, a, a song with a K-pop artist with BTS, make a song with Linkin Park, and actually on my new album, a uh, song with Blink-182. And Lady which Antebellum. Is a, song, a country artist with Lady Antebellum, <laughs> a song with Jimmy Eat World, a song with Bella Thorne. Why do people want to work with you? Um, not everyone wants to work with, I mean, there's like, it's like, a healthy list. <laughs> it's because I'm, I'm putting myself out there. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm like reaching out, I'm talking to people, I'm connecting with people. And, uh, you know, as many, as many, actually as many names are on the list, there's three times more names of artists that like, you know, either like they didn't get the song I tried to send them or they passed for whatever reason, you know? So it's, it's not like uh, I'm getting a hundred percent of what I want, you know, like. Uh -huh. It's a game of baseball. 
You know, it's a game of baseball. Like the best baseball player has a has, has an average of hitting the ball three out of ten times. You have to play the game like that, where it's not like about me uh, getting the eight or, or nine out of ten times. If I get like two, then you're good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm solid. What, what was the most challenging collaboration on Neon Feature Three? Um, well, the Bill Nye record. I wouldn't say that working with Bill per se was challenging, but the music. I I did at least I don't know seven or eight versions to get it to where it is now. I wouldn't say it's because of Bill. I just wanted to make the song just epic because it's a collaboration with Bill, Bill Nye. Nye. So I put a lot of pressure on that one. The Mike Posner record, um, that that was a long process too. A lover that, and a memory. A lover and a memory. That song it took at least. I don't know, 12 versions maybe. Whoa. What, was yeah. Mike always on it? Did he, did he write it? Yeah, he wrote the lyrics. He wrote the melodies. He wrote, he's wrote the song. Got it. And I wrote the, I wrote the beat. I wrote the production. And, uh, you know, like, I, I, I love that song. You know, when I have a lot of love for the song, I have put a lot of pressure on it to, to make it feel right, to make it feel right in the mood, lyrically, you know. And that song is, you know, it has like a dark sentiment. So um, I don't know why it took a lot. But the Blink-182 song was was an interesting process because it started in the studio with them in John Feldman's studio. And uh, in the same regard, the song with, with uh, Jimmy At Jim Atkins from Jimmy World, it also started in John Feldman's studio too. Actually, very interesting story about that it was Callum Hood from Five Seconds of Summer was singing, was singing, helping write the song, um, played some of the bass uh, on that. Wow. And, and actually, like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what I could say on that, but um, the songwriting room for the song with uh, Jim Atkins was, was uh, Mark Hoppus, Travis Barker, Callum Hood, John Feldman, and myself. Dude, wow. yeah. what, what do you learn from that session? That I I am the uh, the most not un non talented as that a word <laughs> like the like the the non talented guy in the room like I'm just like these guys are just like leagues beyond me but um I'm just lucky to be in the room working with them. But what did you bring that nobody else had? Um, the electronic energy to it, you know, yeah. like they they do what they do naturally best, you know, and I, it's all another thing I learned too. I remember when I did a song with Lincoln Park. Uh, the first collab we did together, um, we we're sending files back and forth, me and Mike Shinoda, and I was sending guitar lines and bass. He's like, no, please do not send what we do best. Okay, <laughs> that's what we do. I don't want to hear your guitar. And I brought a guitarist in. I was like, I'm pretty, pretty <laughs> playing guitar. But I play guitar. Actually, I play guitar on, on you know, Future 3. But... um. I brought a guitarist and I flew him into the studio. I was like, I need you to play a sick lead, sick line. And I brought a bassist in, you know, and uh, and he's like, I don't want to hear this stuff. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, duh. You know, so, you know, you learn what you do best. You learn what other people do best. And, uh, and you know, it's a collaboration at the end of the day. BTS, how do you first meet the guys? And were they in the studio with you? Or did you do the song, finish it and send it off? What was that process like? Yeah, so the process for um, Wasted on Me was uh, they yeah, they sent me their vocals. Got it. Um, I, okay, I'll, I'll start again. So I, I, I found this song, an incredible song. Actually, I worked with some great songwriters, and these songwriters wrote the song. And I was like, this is perfect for BTS. I really, I'm like crossing my fingers. I hope they'll do this one because it's, it's all in English. And uh, I sent it to them. And we've already had a very healthy... Dude, Very Mike fluid drop, relationship. We had Mike record. Drop. We did Truth Untold. I produced that song for them on Love Yourself. Um, so this is our third song together. I'm like, I think this would be a smash if you guys were on this one. And I sent it to them. They loved it. I'm like, because ah. it would be so cool to do an English, all English song with them. And, you know, RM did his thing too. So it, it, it's like they, they were in the studio. They were, they were you know, writing too. And... They sent me because they're they're writing in Korea, so they sent me their stems, and you know generally when I work in the studio with artists, uh, 
we're like, we're going back and forth. Okay, do one more take. Okay, yeah. do one more take. Actually, let's go back in the studio in two weeks. Let's do another take. Uh, let's keep going. Let's, you know, it's it's a game of perfection. Try to get to the best as possible because once it's out, you can't make any changes. But with BTS, I didn't want them to make any changes from what I heard. Wow. This was one of the rare times. It was like, you give me gold. Like, I, I love the nuances. I love wow. how you, how they can sing the song in their way. I don't want English pronounced, pronounced words in a way that sounds English, quote unquote, to Americans' ears, okay? BTS, I want that raw, I want that raw, like, unfiltered, you know, genuine feeling. And that's really one of the main things that everyone loves BTS because they're so genuine. That's it. And you hear it, you could hear it in their voices. You like, it's soulful. You really feel it when you hear it. And that's at the end of the day. It's like, you want to make a song that people feel. You know, like, if people feel the song, if it gets into their 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 bloodstream, it gets into their heart, you you won. You like you won on all accounts because that's the whole point. You know, it's like one thing to sing the song, but when I hear "Happier" by Marshmallow and Bastille, like I I like you, I like it's sad. You feel yeah. his emotion. Yeah, you you and you and you like feel it. You yeah. you like you get into it. And like uh, you know, that's I think over time, I've learned that process as well. You know that you know it's at the end of the day, it's about what we said. You know. 20 minutes ago about music really does something to you. It, it makes you feel something in a way that can change your life. What does BTS's success tell you about the future of music? BTS success? Yeah, BTS's success. What is it? What, what does it tell you about the what future? What does it tell you about the future? Well, it's, I, 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 I like to look at it like the four minute mile. Okay. okay. But in this, in this way, you know, the four minute mile was like, you know, let's just talk about that. You know, like, no one could beat this four minute mile, right? And then one guy finds a technique and he beats it. And everyone's like, holy, you, you beat the impossible. You beat the impossible. No one could beat it. You beat it. And guess what happens? I mean, then you have to beat it again. No, no. Then other people started beating it. Okay. That's the whole thing. It's like once someone can beat it, other people start beating it. Like, do they feel the like next confidence person, next person. now to do it? To no. Beat it? So what's happening now is culture, the dominant language and culture is English, especially in America, right? America dictates a lot of what the rest of the world also listens to. You know, like Drake and Post Malone, you know, Drake's Canadian, but the, the fact is, nothing wrong with Canadians. <laughs> but like, <laughs> the, the, the fact is, is that the world no, listens and like goes, hey, what are the Americans listening to over there? You know, like Travis Scott, Post Malone. No, they want our culture. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, okay, if Americans are championing a non-dominant language like the Latin culture, like Spanish that took over, right? That that was a four-minute mile. I guess. That was, Despacito was a four-minute mile. Broke records beyond records beyond records. Mm -hmm. Louis Fonzi, Daddy Yankee, four-minute mile. They broke it. K-pop came through. So I have to be, give big shout-out to the whole Latin world that 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 really they broke it for not just for Spanish speaking uh, Latinos Latinas they broke it for all non dominant cultures to become dominant and to give a level going back to diversity a diversity in how we listen to music it doesn't need to be in English it doesn't need to be this American thing quote unquote thing it could be we are global. You know, we're global. We're like, it doesn't have to be that way. So now with K-pop, now with BTS, that speaks also to my heart because they're Asian faces. They're Asian people representing this, this music. And it gives so much hope and dreams to all the Asian kids. For me, when I grew up, it was Bruce Lee. Yeah. The Asian face that, that the world loved, the world looked up to. From, from black from black kids to Mexican kids to Indian kids to Asian kids to white kids everyone's like yo Bruce Lee is dope I agree. you know and BTS I say is the second Same coming thing. the second coming global a uh, 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 global face Asian faces that represent culture at large right That's it. so it's like 
What is the future? More of this to happen. More of the diversity to not just be these subcultures, to not live, live in the underground or not live in subsects. Like, okay, we're really big only in India. We're really big only in Brazil. We're really big only in Colombia. We're really only big in South Africa. No, we are like the, the, the possibilities are going to happen more and more. And I'm waiting and I'm ready for it. Well said. It's exciting. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Neon Future is coming out November 9th. Worth your ear. I haven't listened to it, but I'm looking at the track list and it's, dude, it's collaboration on collaboration. It, it's pretty incredible. The list of artists Thank that you're you. teaming up with. Grammy, do you want to see another nomination? Are it's you been kidding? A while. Of course. I mean, <laughs> funny if you're like, no, no, I don't want to be a Grammy. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, I, I remember when I went to the Grammys for Wonderland, my first album, I was like, I don't understand how this is even nominated as best <laughs> dance album. Like, it just, I didn't, I never thought about it like that. Uh, uh, you know, and I was like, holy sh, you know, like the, the music community at large actually. Or the music committee at Grammy, the Grammys music committee actually recognizes me as a nominee. A nominee for you know, I, I just didn't know my, I just, I it just it blew me away. You know, like um, it, it's like you're recognized by mainstream once again. You know, it's like uh, and you know, it, it means it means everything. You know, it means everything that your music can have that kind of effect. It, real validation. Yes, it's a it, it is a it's it's a dangerous thing to do is to validate yourself with things like that. But yeah, it's it. I mean, of course, it validates me. You how, know? Do you, how do you measure success today? I think the most important thing with success is like if, if you measure it with how much money is in your bank account, like you know the possessions that you have, uh, the the Grammy nominations that you have, or whatever. You're you're always going to be riding this roller coaster of emotions, and and you'll never be fulfilled. And you have to measure it on your own happiness. It doesn't matter if you have more money than the next guy. Someone else is going to have more money than you. Someone else is going to have a better uh, car than you, a better bicycle than you, better watch than you, a better shoes than you, a uh, better haircut than you, better eyebrows, you know, a uh, better butt. You know, like, <laughs> like I don't know, you might have a better butt than me. I, I, I've, uh, uh, yeah. But, My butt is a little bit too juicy. Too, yeah. Okay. So, like, you definitely have a better <laughs> butt than me. But at the end of the day, you have to measure it with like you have to if you if you put yourself out there like that, you're just gonna just like you're gonna you're gonna sink into like you know just bad stuff, you know. And I just know that you know you have to be happy within yourself. And if you could find the happiness, um, you know, in the right places, then then like. That's how that's how you're successful. It doesn't matter if you have like ten grand, ten dollars, ten whatever. You know, it does. It just like that should never me uh, measure your success. What makes you happy? Happiness. Mm -hmm. But but is it? But what? It's what, based on the the people I love. It's based on my family. It's based on the core. You know, the core of what I do. I get that. Neon features coming out on November 9th. Worth it. Uh, really, Pretender. I believe needs more time. Deserve more time well, back. Keep in the day. playing. I mean, you guys play music on the show. Dude, yeah, of course. <laughs> we do. Yeah, so, I mean, well, I, I don't. I don't know. We're talking all the whole time. I'm playing even... the BTS yeah. record. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. When you look back at your everything, what do you want to be known for? Um, I don't know. I don't think like that. I don't is, think like that. Is I mean, it not I'm trying just... to create a neon future for everybody. <laughs> um. What do I want to be known for? Yeah, yeah, let's let's go there. Let's, to create a neon future. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> create a neon future. I mean, like, you know, that's been my that's been my main thing, you know, like for a long time. Um I'm excited for the future. I'm excited to where it's gonna go. Uh and you know, I'm ready for it. So yeah, let's let's keep yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like I guess what I do, just like I say, it's like the idea of sharing the connectivity, uh, uh, you know, bringing happiness to people through music, through the different mediums that 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 like are in my life. And making science fiction science fact. Yes, Dude. that's so there exciting. It is. The so, there it is. Part of there all it is. Of it, to be honest with you, yeah. I mean, music's amazing, and it's an incredible vessel to get there. But yeah. that's it's awesome, Steve Aoki. Thank you, you dude. Thank I you. really appreciate Thank it. You. Deeply. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. 
If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.